so how how do these guys get and ladies get better? How how do they get better? Because there's a and I, and I understand it's 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 fast. Yeah. I've I've stood on the sideline myself, and for them to see stuff as it's going that fast with people that big becoming even bigger because there's pads yeah. and helmets on, it is remarkable how much they get right. But the stuff that's getting wrong seems to be coming home to roost a heck of a lot more in recent years. Yeah. So what 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 happens? Like what well, goes it down, is, man? It's, it's reps. It's it's actual reps on the field it's video it's and holding the officials a lot of people don't know the officials are held accountable How right so? they are they are evaluated on every game they're evaluated on all the calls they make they should have made the positioning the mechanics all of it their rules knowledge they have to take exams and and, and pass those exams and that evaluation right that accumulates throughout the season and if you don't grade out right you're in a you're in a they have a tier system and if yep. you're in a lower tier you're not getting a postseason assignment. Then you're kind of going into a remedial training. And then if you don't get up into that acceptable range, they let you go. So so it's just not right. We hear when a coach gets fired. We hear when a player gets cut. We don't hear about those things when officials get let go. But they do get let go. They are held accountable. And I just don't know what what is the expectation because I've had I've had, you know, Bill Belichick told me. The same thing that Jim Caldwell told me in two separate conversations. They is. both said there are three groups that affect games, coaches, players, and officials. And he said coaches make the most mistakes, then players, then officials. They make the fewest mistakes, but officials are expected to be perfect, right? They're the only group that's expected to be perfect. And I just don't know if they're 95% accurate. We're never going to get to 100. So what is the acceptable? And I'm not, believe me, I'm not defending. I get more frustrated when I watch you know, the, the Justin Herbert play or watch the, the Josh Allen play. And sometimes that's just they missed it. Sometimes we need better people. We need better training. All of that goes into it. Well, two things. When you say that uh, officials are the only out of a groups of players and coaches who are expected to be perfect, I think Dak Prescott would like a word. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Thanks. Thank I you. thought you were going to say the broadcast. No, 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 no. I wasn't yeah. going me. Yeah, but no. No, the rules uh, analysts are perfect. Yeah, yeah that's we're true the only too. group that we that's actually true too. meet. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. secondly, in order to help, and I know you made a point earlier that you think technology is causing a little bit of a hitch and a giddy up, a second guess not being as yeah. crisp on a call as possible. But I mean, how how could you not need it? When things happen oh, so bang, no bang, how could you not we open it up to absolutely it. everything? Because we're it's the technology is already there and it's confusing to fans as to when it is used. Perfect example on Monday night football, Jordan Addison, 17 yard gain. Nope. It's really a four yard gain. Why replay assist has buzzed in four yard gain because his knee was down. Great. Why not use that as to whether a player's helmet did actually collide with a head and neck area. Why not actually use it to see if that really is roughing the passer? Why don't use it to really see if the player that is clearly being hit in my mind as he's going out of bounds was in fact out of bounds like Justin Herbert on Sunday night football. I don't for the life of me yeah. understand it. And I would like to know I, what I, is happening. I am and look, I've been involved in the NFL. I was there when we brought replay back in 99 and I've seen the evolution, mm -hmm. but I, I agree. I think there's an opportunity. We did it in spring football in the XFL last year. We gave the coaches one challenge and you could challenge anything, anything, anything. And I, I remember being in meetings with Wade Phillips and Reggie Barlow and, and, and Heinz Ward, and they were peppering me with questions. You know, can we challenge this? And I'm like, guys, my answer is going to be yes to what at any officiating decision you can challenge once. And we did it. And they challenged 43 times. We changed on the entirety on of the, the season, entire season, not in the game, not in the game, <laughs> right. they, 43 times. We, we overturned 11. So we corrected what we felt were 11 obvious mistakes that impacted the outcome of, of games. And I think there's an opportunity for that, right? I don't think we need to get into every little second on the clock or every yard, you know, it's a 28 versus a 29. But when you do have big 15 yard yeah. game changing penalties, let's give, use the technology, let the officials officiate the play, not be thinking about replay, but then, hey, coach, you think the official made a mistake? You think it's a horse collar? Use your challenge. So, but what about Sky, the, the, the pushback whenever I say this? 
to somebody in the league or competition committee or ownership is, well, what about when there's no penalty called? Yeah. Do because then then the game we now becomes a million way. a million years long. We we said you could challenge if if the flag wasn't thrown. But, but what I'm saying is that even if the flag wasn't, so you're saying you put it in the hands of the coach to challenge. Yes. Now and not because That's, because right now you're stopping play. You're cre- you're correcting mistakes to save the coach from a challenge. That system is in place again, and we I don't know when it's used because I'd rather the the league use it instead of a turning a 17 yard gain into a four yard gain. I'd rather say use it when the spot of the ball is so way off that cost the Rams a game, but 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 the coach that's was it. out you of a challenge. You hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. Like and that's, that's when you could. That's sh- what I was talking about earlier with the technology. We're correcting things that aren't as impactful, and we're not correcting the major ones, yeah. right? And like I think game, that's, that was game over that's for the Rams. We, that's what we have to. That's what we have to get to. And I think the idea of a sky judge, the concept is good, but they're just you have to limit it, right? You can't just say, we can't just reofficiate every play and, and look at it. Oh, well, maybe there was a hands to the face on that play. Maybe there was, I got to look at all 22 players. You're just, you're never going to be able to do that. So how do we limit it and get, and that's why we came up with the coaches challenge to say, Hey, you, you've got one opportunity break in case of emergency, break glass in case of emergency. And, you know, and, and I think going forward, we'll say, hey, if you win one, you get a second one. And those types of things where you can keep it limited, but correct an obvious mistake that is truly going to have an impact on the outcome. Of the I game. would say any flag that's thrown for 15 yards should be sky yeah. judged. Yeah. I, I, not I not ones that, that haven't been called. Yeah. I don't disagree but that's, with that. That's where a coach can come in and use my challenge. You missed yes. it. I'll use my challenge yeah. there. And maybe, yeah. you know, because there's so many of these, they get it right, they get another. Yeah. I don't any know, or one and a half. Or you know? any player safety foul that's the flag is thrown, that going through kind of an all-clear process for, yep, it's a flag or no, pick it up. Right. I think that works. Yeah, you, you already can, have a stop clock, right? Right, and, the, and, yeah. and officials are already huddling. So even yeah. if the decision isn't made out of the huddle, yeah. it still looks as if the officials on the field have made the decision yeah. And I kind of dig that idea because I'm watching every roughing the passer replay through my fingers like I'm watching a horror movie. I'm like, we how is this one going to piss place. me We're off? all over the place with roughing the passer. And the problem, and we've gotten away from this idea of body weight, drives me nuts. Because when I started, you had to actually do something. You had to lift and drive or lift and slam, do something extra and now we're just saying if you just tackle the quarterback and you don't get your body off to the side, it's 15 yards. And that, to me, is mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.